So I think it's time. Welcome all to this seminar where Carolina Costa will defend her doctoral thesis in chemical engineering. And the title of the thesis is Cellulose Dissolution and Amphiphilicity Insights on the Emulsion Formation and Stabilization. My name is Don Bielund, and uh, I'm a professor in uh, analytical chemistry here at Mid Sweden University, and I will share this event. First of all, quick reminder please mute your phones if you haven't done it already. So with us here today, we have a number of key persons. And of course, in the center, Carolina Costa, the respondent. Uh, but then I'm also very happy to introduce the faculty opponent, the distinguished professor, Orlando Rochas. Uh, he's professor at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, where he's heading a very successful research group on bio-based uh, colloids and materials. So welcome. And um, behind Orlando, you'll see the examination board uh, where we have Professor Lars Evenes at Chalmers in the Division of Applied Chemistry. And uh, we have Associate Professor Marima Hassani also at Chalmers, uh, but at the Division of Chemical Engineering. And finally, Associate Professor Torbjörn Pettersson at the Royal Institute of Technology, uh, Division of Hybrid Technology. So, and uh, the role of the opponent is, of course, to scrutinize on the uh, content of the thesis and hopefully get a fruitful discussion together with Carolina. Uh, while the examination board has the power to decide whether Carolina has passed or failed today. Uh, of course, Carolina hasn't done all this work all by herself. Uh, she has had a number of people around her and most of all the supervisors. Here in the audience, we have uh, Professor Magnus Norgen, the main supervisor, and Professor Håkan Edlund as the co-supervisors. But their role today is only to be here as a moral support and sit quiet. Uh, I will briefly go through the procedure of this session. And uh, first of all, Carolina will give a presentation of the content of the thesis. After that, we will have a short break and then the opponent will give a short talk, putting the thesis into a broader perspective. And after that, we will have a discussion, a questioning between the opponent and, and the respondent. And when the opponent is satisfied, the word is given to the examination board, who will ask questions to Carolina. And finally, it will be open from for questions from all of you. And we are around 20 people here in the, in the uh, uh, here at Mitzvah University. And in Zoom, we have now 30 particip participants. So there might be a lot of questions, Carolina. Uh, and when everyone is satisfied, there's no more questions to be uh, answered. Uh, we will break up from here and the committee will have a meeting to decide upon the, on the grade. Uh, and by that, it's time for me to give the word to Carolina. And first, first of all, I must ask you if there's anything you'd like to add, if there's an errata list or uh, something yes. like that. There is an errata list that I think has been included in the thesis already in the beginning. So by that, it's time for the presentation. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for the nice introduction. I hope you can hear me well here and on Zoom. Um, I will be here presenting my thesis today, which is entitled Cellulose Dissolution and Amphifelicity, Insights on the Emulsion Formation and Stabilization. Uh, 
it's not working. Well, uh, it's not, the slides are not passing. Maybe now, yeah, okay. So I will follow this outline, starting from the motivation of the work, state of the art and research question, objective and impact, and then we'll go through the results and discussion, conclusions and uh, future perspectives. So as the title suggests, we will be here talking about cellulose, amphifilicity and emulsions. These are the three keywords of my work. So starting from cellulose, cellulose is a plant-based material and a key renewable source for the development of sustainable materials that can compete with the petroleum-based ones. And as striking examples, we have the bioplastics and textiles, the biodegradable bioplastics and textiles made from cellulose. Apart from its environmental importance, this molecule, um, cellulose is an amphiphilic molecule due to a spatial distribution of hydrophilic uh, groups or loving water and hydrophobic groups or fearing water. And so this means that this molecule can, can be attracted by both water and oil molecules. And this is a very useful feature for its application in emulsions where amphiphilic molecules or particles are required to stabilize the interface. And as a result, we can end up with oil uh, droplets dispersed in water or water droplets dispersed in oil. And this can also be of good use in other applications where polymer um, absorption is required, such as, for example, suspensions and uh, foams. But uh, in this thesis, we focused on uh, emulsions. And emulsions can have uh, plenty of applications in several industrial sectors, such as in pharmaceutics, foods, cosmetic and personal care, paints and coatings, but they can also serve as templates for the development of other materials, such as foams, which are lightweight materials, and um, for example, hollow microspheres, which have plenty other applications um, as well. So they can be used as drug delivery careers for biomedical applications, also as microreactors and catalysts for sensors and supercapacitors, and also as fillers and rheological modifiers for composites, insulation materials, and packaging. And in this area, the market of synthetic emulsifiers has been dominating, but now due to uh, sustainability reasons, it is time to work for, for a change. And it is uh, amazingly surprising how cellulose can be such a versatile source of uh, natural emulsifiers and stabilizers. Both polymers and uh, particles have been used to stabilize uh, emulsions. Uh, through chemical reactions, we obtain the cellulose derivatives, which are molecular emulsifiers, and they have been commercialized since early. Um, many of them tailor-made to be water-soluble and others could be more hydrophobic. Through strong acid hydrolysis or mechanical treatments, we end up with nanoparticles, which uh, interest in using these materials has been growing exponentially, and there is a lot of work going on in this area. And uh, finally, we have the regenerated particles, which we obtain through a dissolution and regeneration uh, process, which means we dissolve the material and then we precipitate it in order to get either solid particles or micro microgels. And so the question arises, why not using directly the cellulose solutions, um, having cellul native cellulose molecules as, as a, molecular, a molecular emulsifier? So is uh, native molecular cellulose amphiphilic enough so to absorb a toil water interfaces and be able to stabilize emulsions? This is a, a very important question, not only for the expandable of the ex, uh, yeah the expandable application of cellulose in uh, emulsions, but also this is another way of collecting uh, evidences of the role of the hydrophobic interactions in cellulose dissolution and self self assembly, which is still a subject of controversy in the in the in the main in the scientific community. 
So, but the big uh, problem here is, of course, to dissolve cellulose. Cellulose does not dissolve in water, but we can dissolve it in aqueous media in both uh, extreme, at extreme pHs, as in alkaline uh, media or uh, acidic. This can be, of course, a limiting factor in life science applications, but this approach can be adapted to other applications where these extreme conditions do not possess a problem. So as the main goal of this thesis, uh, we wanted to study the interfacial behavior of cellulose molecules at oil-water interfaces and its emulsification ability in aqueous media. And as an expected impact, uh, we, we hope that we could further understand the mechanisms and interactions be behind the solution and self-assembly of cellulose molecules. Uh, this approach could also bring an opportunity to develop new cellulose-based materials based on emulsion technology. And finally, this knowledge that may be extendable for applications that involve other surfaces or interfaces, such as surface modification or uh, foams and suspensions. So moving on to the results now, um, this will be divided into five um, points. We will start by talking about interfacial activity of cellulose in both acidic and alkaline media. And then we go through its emulsification ability in both media, emulsions microstructure, a few highlights on the emulsions microbiology and stability. And the, the, the last point does not concern uh, emulsions directly, but um, we will be talking about adding lignin as uh, an additive in cellulose solutions. And this came with the purpose of um, adding another amphiphilic co-stabilizer natural amphiphilic stabilizer and see if there was a synergy in creating emulsions later on. So uh, now talking a little bit about uh, interfacial activity um, in general. So when we have uh, a, a molecular emulsifiers, we, we usually expect these molecules, amphiphilic molecules to decrease the interfacial tension between oil and water. And so to help the, the mixing of the systems, and what we have seen when um, when what we, what we have seen uh, for cellulose in both acidic and alkaline media is that the interfacial tension between the oil the oils and the solvents was uh, substantially decreased by the presence of cellulose in it and this is an effect of absorption of molecules at the interfaces so that hydrophilic groups points toward the water and hydrophobic groups points toward the the oil and this will decrease the energy needed for mixing and facilitate droplet breakup as we can be inferred now by uh, on these pictures on on the right so uh, on top, if we mix oil in the solvent alone, we are uh, left with still uh, or, um, large pools of oil uh, that were not emulsified, and these droplets that are um, emul uh, kind of emulsified, um, they will be separating quickly. When we add cellulose to the system, then the picture changes. We don't see any longer oil uh, dispersed in, in, in oil swimming in, <laughs> in the samples, uh, we see a fine dispersion of uh, droplets that are stable for longer times. But let's uh, now take a closer look uh, into each um, uh, media. So in acidic media, we have acid hydrolysis of the cellulose chains. This will cleave the chains into shorter chains. And this was used to study the effect of molecular cellulose on, on the interfacial activity. So what we have seen is that in the first 24 hours, the molecular weight decreases uh, substantially after which uh, uh, the, connectives, the connectives of the acid hydrolysis decrease, go, go into a slower pace. And um, eventually these uh, molecular weight distributions become narrower, uh, much narrower and less polydispersed. And this has a beneficial effect in reducing the interfacial tension. Uh, this was attributed to the uh, faster diffusion of shorter molecular, uh, shorter molecules to the interface. And, and so as a consequence, also a better um, packing of the molecules and uh, most probably a large amount of uh, emulsifier can be, can be covering the droplets. This um, uh, results um, 
are similar to the ones compare to the ones in, in literature regarding cellulose derivatives such as MC and HPMC regarding uh, the interfacial tension decreasing uh, value range and also molecular rate. In alkaline media, uh, we have used uh, now three different uh, solvents uh, in order to study the effect of solvent quality, quality on cellulose migration to the interface. This was done because um, in literature, it is known that uh, in alkaline media, cellulose dissolution is improved by the addition of additives or um, also or, or organic uh, bases, uh, which possess uh, organic cations and have an aphiphilic character. So we have here used sodium hydroxide as a polar solvent, and then we have an, uh, sodium hydroxide urea with an intermediate polarity, and uh, also TBAH, tetrabutyl ammonium hydroxide, which has uh, an amphiphilic character. So what we have seen is that, uh, so in sodium hydroxide-based uh, systems, uh, the, the interfacial tension was decreased in both cases, but this, was, this effect was more pronounced when we had urea in the system. And this was attributed to a better dissolution of cellulose and so more uh, readily available molecules to uh, absorb efficiently at the interface. In the case of uh, TBAH, the case was uh, very uh, uh, was different, and it was difficult to draw any conclusions from these uh, studies, given the strong amphiphilic character of the solvent, and which gave this already very much low uh, interfacial tension. So. Uh, after the interfacial tension uh, investigations, the next question that we uh, come for is, um, is cellulose in its dissolved state able to stabilize oil and water emulsions? And the answer is uh, yes, it is, but for a very short time. Um, oil was seen to be separating uh, readily after 24 hours, uh, so floating, floating to the top, as you can see here. Um, and this was, uh, could be um, a consequence of uh, poor steric stabilization after uh, hydrolysis of, the, of the, the cellulose chains. Or it could also be coming from a two-polar character in acidic media since cellulose is positively charged due to protonation of the hydroxyl groups. So in order to get a, a long-term stability, we had to further reduce uh, cellulose solvency in the solvent, and that was done by adding um, uh, an anti solvent, in this case was water, and we call this the in situ regeneration because while uh, adding an, an anti solvent, cellulose chains were uh, regenerating on the surface of the droplets. And this gave us, uh, turned out to be uh, excellent in uh, stability against the microphase separation of, of the oil. These emulsions could be stable for one year without seeing oil uh, coming off. Also, there was a decrease in droplet size and this uh, this polydispersity. And um, but this was still uh, these emulsions were still characterized by uh, flocculation and and creaming destabilization mechanisms. The effect of hydrolysis was also seen to. Um, have uh, have an effect on, on the the sizes of the droplets formed. Formed so shorter chains are able to form uh, shorter uh, smaller uh, droplets, and also uh, the poly the size uh, distribution because becomes much narrower and less uh, polydisperse. Um, in alkaline media. We also prepared uh, oil and water emulsions for the three different solvents. And here it was possible to confirm that uh, we were able to create uh, emulsions for the, uh, the uh, sodium hydroxide solvents uh, with cellulose in it. So they were uh, stable for some time, which was actually longer than what was seen for the acidic media. Um, uh, but we could also uh, confirm that in tetrabutyl ammonium hydroxide, 
there was uh, no good emulsification and this is attributed to a, a too good solvency which uh, leads to a lack in, in stabili stability of the emulsion due to low adsorption. So also in this case, uh, for the sodium hydroxide based solvents, um, they, they still uh, possess uh, probably a two polar character because in strong alkali also cellulose is uh, charged due to deprotonation of the hydroxyl groups. So we also had to further decrease the solvency of cellulose in order to obtain uh, more stable emulsions. And in this case, we did it by uh, progressive additions of uh, acid to the systems, uh, which is uh, uh, observed in this, in this uh, rectangle here, red rectangle here. So um, by decreasing the, the pH, this was a very slight decrease, but uh, we can see that the, the stability was very much um, improved. Uh, first, regarding the oil separation, we didn't see any oil separation here and here after, after this uh, reduction in solvency and also uh, in creaming stability. So while, while continuously decreasing the pH, then the creaming was improving. The creaming stability was improving. The case for tetrabutyl ammonium, uh, it was uh, quite different. So in the second edition, the first edition of oil didn't seem to have a, a, an effect, but for the second edition, it seems that we have here an emulsion with just a thin layer of oil on top. Uh, so we could um, think that we have an emulsion here, but actually a deeper analysis led us to the conclusion that this was just oil, big oil droplets trapped in a network of cellulose, of regenerated cellulose, which after complete phase separation of the oil, then this network would uh, sediment and cover all, all this uh, uh, part. And this was uh, confirmed also by fluorescence uh, microscopy. So in here you can, uh, well, maybe you cannot see very well, but uh, we did, uh, we have our emulsions here and cellulose is uh, stained with calcofluorite. Uh, so we see that for the sodium hydroxide based systems, we have uh, droplets stabilized by, by cellulose, a thin film of cellulose around, uh, which is different from the regenerated suspensions that we did as a control. But for TBH, uh, there is not much of a difference. We see these large pool, uh, pools of oil and also some droplets, but we do not see cellulose around. And in the back, uh, here I can see it better, but in the back, we see pretty much the same as um, here on top. So now uh, going to the emulsions, the analysis of the emulsions microstructure for both acidic and alkaline media. Uh, in acidic systems, uh, it was a bit, uh, this was done by cryo, cryo scanning electron microscopy, as you can see. But the, in the acidic systems, um, it was possible to, to infer about the topography of the, the surface of the, the droplets, but we could see um, the reams of cellulose around the droplets. So, stabilizing them. In alkaline emulsions, it was possible to see some other fixtures, probably also due to the larger droplets that were found. Uh, two micrographs of the same uh, specimen area were, um, were analyzed, one using a secondary electron detector and uh, so to access topography and one uh, with backscattering electro, uh, backscattered electron detector so to access elemental contrast. So here you can see um, that these dark areas are uh, oil areas, then the brighter areas here around and also in this network are cellulose and the, the gray color in the middle um, is the solvent. Uh, so it was possible to see that cellulose uh, was uh, stabilizing emulsions as a film, which was also inferred from this um, crater here that was left uh, when oil was plucked away by freeze fracturing. <clears throat> and this is the whole network formed uh, in, the, in the medium, the continuous medium. Now a few highlights on the emulsions microreology and stability. So uh, we have been exploring this diffusion wave spectroscopy technique, 
which uh, allows us for much higher frequencies than uh, conventional rheometry and also allows, allows us to uh, real-time monitor uh, changes happening in the microstructure of the emulsions. And this technique is gaining popularity in the design and the optimization of, for example, pharmaceutical emulsions, because uh, we can analyze turbid samples with the minimal uh, disturbance. And so uh, on our emulsions, what we found was that uh, emulsions were essentially uh, viscous, uh, looking at the elastic modules and, and uh, viscous molecules, uh, but they had an elastic behavior at um, uh, intermediate frequencies. And there was good complementarity between the two techniques. So this is uh, me were measurements done with conventional rheometry and this with the uh, diffusion wave spectroscopy. Also the emulsions uh, uh, showed uh, a typical shear thinning behavior. Regarding the stability of emulsions um, to temperature, no major, no major structural changes were uh, seen for, uh, for the case where we have uh, where we increase the temperature to 40, 40 degrees, given the elastic and viscous modulus, which these curves are pretty much the same. This was rather a thermal effect on the dynamics of the systems, even by a decrease in viscosity, which is a, a reversible effect. Also, creaming stability was seen to be improved, either if we uh, increase the hydrolysis time, which means uh, we have shorter chains, or the speed of mixing and cellulose concentration. And this was a consequence of having a smaller, uh, of a decrease uh, of uh, in droplet size, which led, um, on the other hand, to an increase in viscosity of the systems. So to conclude a bit on this part, before we go to the final point of the thesis, uh, molecular cellulose is interfacial act active, and this is a similar that has seen to, uh, has seen to be uh, similar to cellulose derivatives. Uh, low molecular weights are more efficient in reducing the interfacial tension. Also, the adsorption behavior of cellulose is dependent on the solvent quality. Uh, intermediate solvencies allow for short-term stability and uh, further solvency decrease by pH change or adding a, 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 a coagulant uh, or an anti-solvent allows for long-term stability, which we call the in-situ regeneration. Uh, droplet size is decreased by low molecular weights, uh, high speed uh, of mixing and increased cellulose concentration. And uh, the emulsion's microstructure, microstructure was found uh, to be a um, film coating like of cellulose around uh, on the surface of the oil droplets, and also um, a, stru a structure network of cellulose uh, in the continuous phase. So uh, now we will talk about the effect of adding lignin in cellulose solutions. And as I have um, uh, mentioned, this came with the purpose of adding lignin as an amphiphilic co-stabilizer, uh, a natural co-stabilizer. So to see if the later we could use this, uh, or if there was a synergy between these two wood polymers in creating emulsions. So what we have seen was that when adding up to 2% of lignin in cellulose uh, alkaline solutions, the um, uh, turbidity of solutions uh, was uh, decreased, and this was an effect that was uh, much more uh, striking for um, lower uh, sodium hydroxide concentrations. Also, uh, in the aged uh, solutions, uh, it was seen that aggre aggregation was very much reduced by the presence of, of lignin. And these results were supported by polarized mic like light microscopy, uh, where we can see that the, the samples with lignin uh, revealed a much finely structured um, network regarding to the ones in regard to the ones that do not have lignin in it. And um, uh, dynamic light scattering served uh, well for us to see that at least uh, lignin was not detrimental to the dissolution of cellulose. Gelation kinetics uh, of the solutions was also seen to be decreased uh, 
by the presence of lignin in it, and this was done by uh, both uh, uh, in viscosity measurements and turbidity measurements, and this was done by uh, cycles of temperature dur during uh, 12 hours, and this suggested that uh, the the network formed uh, when we have lignin in the system is uh, weaker and probably because of uh, some inter uh, hydrophobic interactions with cellulose. We also roughly estimated the crystallinity of the regenerated samples uh, from cellulose lignin solutions and co compared with the the neat solution the solutions in neat sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide uh, urea. Uh, this was done because it is known from the literature that um, additives can um, have an impact in, in the packing of, of the molecules. Uh, and so um, in our um, studies, we concluded that the um, um, solutions that had lignin had a much lower, well, had a, a, a lower crystallinity and also crystalline size was decreasing. And this could give some support um, to the, the previous polarized mic light microscopy where we see a reduction in size on the structures. So to conclude on this part, cellulose dissolution in sodium hydroxide was found to be improved by the presence of lignin. The gelation kinetics of cellulose solutions upon aging and temperature was also improved. Uh, regenerated materials from the cellulose lignin solutions revealed, uh, uh, revealed a lower crystallinity. And also uh, lignin uh, might be able to weaken the hydrophobic interactions between cellulose molecules due to its amphiphilic character. So final conclusions and uh, some future perspectives are that um, the, amphiphilic cellulose, uh, the amphiphilicity of cellulose plays an important role for dissolution and self-assembly. And uh, here, optimal conditions to form and stabilize emulsions with dissolved cellulose were unraveled. Um, we hope that this might open an opportunity to develop new cellulose-based materials based on emulsion technology such, for example, emulsion templates to produce different types of cellulose microspheres. And we also have here the possibility of combining cellulose and, and lignin, so to create other materials coming from the um, biomass. And so, and just as a final message, I would, um, I hope that my work can uh, uh, attract others and that uh, together we could we can contribute to this uh, global um, goal of achieving a more su uh, sustainable society even if it's just a little bit of a contribution um, i would like to thank all the um, uh, financial and supporting organizations also all my co-authors uh, the people that work in the backstage but help us every day going to, through some technical difficulties. Um, also all my research colleagues, friends and family. Thank you. So thanks a lot, Carolina, for the nice presentation. And as I mentioned, now we will take a short break. Uh, we'll utilize that to rig a bit for the opponent also. So we gather again at 10.40. Okay. My mouse was like... Oh. Oh. Now? Now it was good. Now you need to edit our presentation. Okay. <laughs> That's the... the, the... <laughs> But uh, you can come. I don't know if microphone is on. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you cannot imagine. I woke up in the middle of the night, like freaking out totally. So that, then the stress, the stress went down. I didn't tell you because I sometimes when I'm scared, I believe in that. I have to drink some water. Oh, I forgot a few things, but well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, don't 
But it was the total time. But I drank water before, but still, it's like. Ah, no problem. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you for coming. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I saw Inkeleda connected, and then I saw you coming, and I was like, okay. In our departments, they don't let you if you don't start from from the beginning. Yeah, they don't let you. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, thank you. You can do half of the job was super great on it. Hi.